Hello and welcome to the Afterburn 3 Photoshop Action Tutorial. Afterburn 3 is a continuation of the Afterburn Photoshop Action series. This is the third action created by me in order to provide sophisticated fire effects to users who want to generate them without uh, a lot of effort. So, after Burn 3 will uh, allow you to create fire effects similar to this on your photos. For example, this is the original image and this is the generated result. This action is very easy to use. So, in order to use the action, there are a couple of files which uh, we should load. It is the action file and the brushes file we are talking about. So, first we should load the action file from the actions panel. Go to load actions and load the action file. And now we have the action ready. Before running the action, we also have to load the brushes file because the action uses the brushes in order to generate these uh, fire elements. So, we'll go to the brushes and load brushes, the afterburn tree brushes. Click on load. Okay. And now we are ready to go. So, in order to use this action, let's delete all we have and keep a blank photo, photo. We'll have to define the area of the image which uh, the effects will be concentrated upon. So, let's make a new layer and call it Brush with capital B. And on this layer, we will paint with a brush, maybe a harsh brush, white. The area we want. So, let's say we'll do something like that. It doesn't have to be very precise. Okay, and now we have painted the area of interest on the brush layer. All we have to do is run the action. Okay, the action is generating the elements, it is applying effects to them. And we have obtained a result. As you can see, there are some fire elements, there is a blue smoke, and quite a few layers generated by the action, all grouped in the Afterburn Tree folder. So what do we have? Starting from the bottom, we have the brush layer disabled, this hidden right now. We don't need it anymore. We have a big flame 1 layer, which is the blue flame. It also has a layer mask. The layer mask is around the area we brushed. So this basically means the, the entire flame is uh, put behind our subject. If we disable the layer mask, the flame will go in front. Also we have a big flame 2 layer, which is hidden. We can enable it. And we have another flame 
also with the layer mask on which we can disable or enable we have the flames the sparks the rays the diffuse light around our flames we have a subject layer which is hidden this subject layer if we toggle it on will be put in front of the of the elements the fire elements and basically this uh, allows us to hide some parts of the fire elements if uh, we want our subject to be more uh, revealed let's say it also has some inside flames uh, as a note the more dark the darker your image subject is the better the flames will be visible So, the subject, the inside flames, let's say we want to keep it off and see some of the, the effects here. But uh, what if we want to play a bit with the flames? Let's say we want to add some more flames. We can do this very easily. Let's go to the Big Flame 2 layer. We selected it and let's use one of the brushes that the action used let's say this big one which is a flame it's called uh, Artorius Afterburn 3 Big Flames 2 so it is the flame brush used by the action on this layer oops too big and we want to put it here Oh, and now we have another flame over here. Basically, this is how the action works. Let's go to a different file. We have an image of a uh, pretty lady and the brush I already painted. It is around her dress. And let's run the action. Okay. Working. Ah, voila. So, as you can see, by default, the Big Flame 2 is hidden. It is somewhere here. If we enable, if we disable, sorry, the, the layer mask, you can see the flame covers her dress. Or, let's say, we want to... make her dress more visible and uh, less covered by the flames we'll have to activate the subject layer and you see it is a difference between this and this the diffuse light has um, a smart filter applied, actually more filters. We can control the, the diffuse light around the subject. So if we want to make the light more obvious, I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll double click on the Gaussian blur filter and set it to a lower value. Ah, 
and you see this is what I meant also we could hide this flame or maybe this one maybe even the subject and keep her like that or maybe with the purple flames um, this is how the effect looks on this image this is the original and this is the generated result or it could look like this or totally covered in flames there are quite some opportunities which you could explore with this action and uh, I should mention uh, the size of the image you use is relevant it should be around 2000 to 3000 pixels on the long edge because um, the bigger your image will be the smaller the fire elements uh, will get generated so uh, make sure you don't use a very small image because the fire elements will look too big oversized Here is another image. And another image. And our pretty lady. Thank you very much for watching my tutorial. This is Christian wishing you the best results with the action.